It is day 50 of the Zombie Hunter build, and today we have a, a bunch of stuff that we need to do on the truck. Um, the first thing is work on my fender flares. Um, so I have, I have a set of fiberglass fender flares, and they need to be modified. Uh, they fit a regular G-Wagon, but the problem is I have, uh, I don't have the rubber strips running along the rocker panel. And uh, G-Wagons come with these rubber strips and they're awful. They just uh, collect salt and, and grime and stuff. And what ends up happening is all that starts eating through into the rocker panel and the rocker panels, every, every single one gets rusted out. So for example, here's my G500. This truck is not even that old, but look at all that. So this needs to be addressed as well. So I'll probably end up removing this and then grinding that all down and, and respraying it. But you can see this truck is like 20 something years newer than this truck. Um, but you know, that's just the way they're designed. So um, I have to do that. So I'm not gonna put the, those back on there, but what happened is the there's like a little notch in each of the fender flares where it's supposed to sit. You know, these ones don't have it, but the, the 460 models have it. So there's a little notch in there. So I've filled those up with fiberglass already. I'll have to reshape them, um, sand everything down and make it all nice and clean, do a really good job on it. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray them with uh, 2K um, epoxy primer. And then after that, I'm gonna roll them with color matching monster liner. So they'll be body, body matching, you know, just like all these are. I mean, I could I could have keep them in the raw state, like the the raw black fiberglass, or you know, like sometimes you'll see like now the G63s have them where it's not matching the body color. But the problem is I have so much extra black um, accents on this thing that I think that uh, having it color matching will probably look better. So that's the plan. I'm going to do that. Uh, two more things I need to do. Uh, we'll, hopefully, I'll get to them. Is uh, Right now I have 40 millimeter um, spacers on these wheels. I'm gonna remove those. You know, I, I don't like how far it's sticking out. So what I'll do is I'll remove the 40 millimeter ones and I'll put in a set of 31 millimeter ones. That's just enough clearance so that they're outwards. The, the, these wheels will fit. These are the 18 inch ass routes, same ones that I have on here. Um, and there'll be enough clearance for them to, to fit and everything will work and then uh you know they won't be sticking out as far and that way i'll have better coverage when i put the fender flares too because i have se seven centimeters uh fender flares so they come out to about here i would say and if these go back in a little bit you know the, the tires will be peeking out just that much um so it'll, it'll give it more of a, a like a taller you know slender stance rather than being so wide i don't like you know it looks like kind of like a jeep jk or whatever when they put these giants you know offset wheels on there and they're just like sticking out so far i don't want that so i like the kind of like the taller thinner look but i still like the big meaty tires on there so uh yeah it'll look good so there's that and then on top of that i also bought um so the shocks I have in here, uh, you can't really see them. They are trash. Okay, so they, they don't even work. Um, they're not even, they're, not, they're giving me zero, zero assistance. So I'm gonna remove these shocks and I bought a set of cheap uh, Kony shocks to go on there. So I have new shocks on there. Hopefully it'll you know, improve the ride a little bit. Um, you know, that's it. So those, those three things I need to, to crank out. The fender flares, I anticipate them actually taking me all day. I don't, I don't think I'll be able to get to everything, but uh, when I'm gonna be doing the fender flares and installing them and stuff like that, I'll work on the, the wheels too because I'm gonna have the truck up, you know, on, um, on uh, jack stands, you know, I'll have the wheels off of it so I can address that as well. So that's that, it might be two days worth, so it might be day 50 and day 51, but in any case, gotta get to work on it. Another thing that I failed to mention is that I need to put an exhaust on the truck. I was driving down the street and I got a warning, so I went and um, instead of putting the stock um, Mercedes exhaust on there, 
Um, I found it online for around 400 bucks just for the muffler. I went and bought a $20 glass pack muffler, two inch inlet, two inch outlet, and I'm gonna put that on there instead. Um, I'm gonna do it very cheap and very simple just so I have, uh, you know, a muffler on there so that, you know, you don't hear it. Um, I'm not gonna run it up the back yet uh or, or maybe at all i haven't decided but you know i normally it comes out the the back over the gas tank i know i have an, a leak somewhere over there so that's the reason why i don't want to put it over the gas tank because in the event that it does slosh some you know gasoline um on top of the tank i don't want it to ignite and burn everybody in the car so uh i'm going to install that very quickly i don't have hangers or anything like that but what i do have is steel rod and this is uh one eighth i think thickness steel rod oh quarter inch maybe yeah quarter inch by 36 inch just steel rod so i'm going to create my own hangers with that nice and cheap these are about three dollars each you know for 36 inches so one of those should be plenty i think to make enough hangers for myself and put that exhaust on there so all together I'm, I'm you know i got about 25 bucks <laughs> into the into the exhaust that i'm gonna put on there um we'll see i'll put it together uh get that on there quickly looks like it might start raining so i'll try to weld my hangers in place get that done and then i'll start working on the fender flares and the spacers and all that other stuff all right so here's the muffler mocked into place uh it's we got these little clamps on there they're about three bucks each so that adds to the price now. So $20 plus three plus three, 26 plus $3 in bar. I'm still under 30 guys. Um, so I'm going to, uh, so this is not holding. Uh, and I just have it running this way. I wanted to, you know, instead of having it running out the side, I initially was gonna turn this and have it go in that way as well. But uh, I'm concerned that all the, just any, um, vapor and stuff like water vapor and stuff getting all that crap there and exhaust and stuff is gonna mess up the you know the brakes and everything so I just have it right here it's still pretty high I still got like over a foot of ground clearance right I don't even know how much that is I'll, I'll measure it later but that'll be my low point so I'm not too concerned with uh with it smashing on stuff and if it does oh well but um what I'm gonna end up doing now is this broken uh, bracket right here I'm gonna cut the uh, rod to fit and I'm just gonna weld it to the side of this thing because like I said it's a $20 exhaust I'm not I'm not concerned about it you know at all so uh, I'm out of focus so $20 exhaust uh, get it all welded up and held in place you know and maybe do another one over here somewhere maybe just to directly to the frame you know and I'll weld this to the frame you know so it'll be hung in two spots right there it's not gonna go anywhere you know quarter inch rod I think it should hold up pretty good ideally I'd want it you know going up here maybe a 45 another 45 and maybe another 30 or something and going up through that little hole over there where you see the other exhaust hanger and going out the back but like I said I don't feel like dying in a, a fiery death so I'm not gonna do that because that's the, that's the gas tank right there all right so it's gonna go like that go like that and then come up this way should probably clean this mess before I do this but I don't have time and it's about to start pouring so I don't know how much welding I'll be able to get done today all right so now uh, what I have to try to do is weld this hanger in place I'm gonna weld this top part in first I think and then squeeze this on there and then try to 
uh, push this exhaust as far up into the frame rail as I can so that it's as flush to the frame rail as I can, I can get it. Um, keep it out of the way. And then also keep the, you know, the exhaust still coming out uh, towards the rear of the car. Not off to any angles against the, uh, the wheel hubs or anything. Uh, the thing is, uh, the exhaust that was already here, um, it goes a little lower. You know, if it was a little bit higher up, then I can get this tucked up a little bit higher up. Uh, but then you also run the risk of it getting a little too close to this transfer case, and I can already see, you know, um, the transfer case is leaking, and I don't want it getting too hot or whatever. So I might actually tape this up as well. I don't know. We'll see. But in any case, uh, my $30 exhaust uh, so far, right? Tips and everything, everything included, it comes out to under 30 bucks. So I'm happy with that. If it lasts, you know, a year or two, that's fine with me. You know, I can always uh, get something better somewhere down the line. But in the meantime, you know, you, you mostly you run the risk of tearing off your exhaust anyway. You could have a freaking, you know, super expensive uh, exhaust on here, and you might just rip it off one day um, going over some obstacle on the trail. So um, I'm going to weld this into place now, and then uh, from there, just weld, tack weld the rest of the stuff, the exhaust on here to the hanger and this should be good enough to hold it in one place I think just one one uh, quarter inch rod if not I'll, I'll toss another one up here but I think I should be good you know if I tack it here and tack it there and up on there I think that's that's sufficient so let's let's try to get it all welded in place See anything? Ah, <laughs> that's hot. Ah. Ah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Molten metal everywhere. Ah. Probably should have cleaned it off first. Ooh, it smells like something's on fire. Bitch. Am I on fire? <laughs> That's why it's nice to have an actual garage. If I had a lift, I'd be out of the way of all this crap. And if also if I wasn't using freaking flux core. One day. One day I'll have the money not to to do it the cheap way. Yikes. Ah! Jeez, it's freaking hot. Ah! I got little metal freaking lava balls sticking to me. Oh, this sucks. I think that's good. At least, uh, at least for now, you know, that'll keep the the police off my back for a little while. But man, did I get burnt up doing that!
All right, with a little bit of love from the impact gun, I was able to get this sucker off. You can see how nasty it is, rusted. All right, now pull these things out. Set it up a little high. I can get it off the top now. All right, so here are the shocks. I got Coney shocks, they're adjustable. Uh, these ones are for the rear, that's for the front. You can see the, the front old shock next to it. Pretty ridiculous. All right, so um, they're adjustable, but I think they're at calibrated at the, the appropriate setting right out of the box. So I'm not gonna mess with that. Um, if there's an issue with it, I can play with them later. Anything's better than what I had on there. You know, those, those shocks that I had on there were completely inefficient because they were completely uh, destroyed. Alright, so I'm going to put those in now. And then uh, I'll work on changing those wheel spacers before I start working on the fender flares. Alright, so it's just a matter of putting the washers, the bushing, and then I'll just have to put the other bushing in with the washer, push it all into place, and then start getting this on. That's it. Straightforward, very simple. I just got to make sure everything's aligned, and then I'll tighten everything up. Alright, so this is a lot harder to get to. Uh, I don't have a crescent wrench big enough, I don't think. I gotta see what size that is. Uh, the biggest I got is 17 millimeters. So if I don't have uh, a means to get that open, I gotta go buy a crescent wrench to fit there. But uh, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna change these spacers. Alright, so these are the 40 millimeter ones. I'm going to replace them with the 31 millimeter ones just so I can get my wheels more inboard. And then, uh, and then I'll replace these as well. Alright, time to get to work. Alright, so... Here's the, the difference, and it's pretty significant. You know, those nine millimeters actually come out to be about, well, obviously, about a centimeter, right? So, um, I'm gonna replace those so everything will be inboard about a centimeter. That's way easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's junk. <clears throat> Alright, so now i got to try to get the bottom part out. But I have a jack stand there, so I might have to move it over or something. Alright, so these bolts here are a freaking nightmare. I cannot get them off. Uh, there's like a sleeve on there that's rusted on and... It's just, I, I don't know, um, poorly designed, I guess. I don't, you know, unless these are the original ones and they've just been on there for 40 years. But, you know, it's, it's ridiculous, man. Like, I can't, I can't get them off. Uh, I managed to get the top one off the there, 
but the, the bottom one I cannot get off for the life of me. And same goes for the other side. So that one moves a little bit, um, but I, I cannot get it off and I can't get the top one off on that side. So um, I don't know what size these are, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get my sawzall and just cut right through them, you know. I'll just buy new bolts, I guess, because I cannot... It's the only thing I can think of. I can't get, I can't remove them. It's, it's impossible. All right, so that took entirely too long, and I had to cut that gigantic bolt. So here's the carnage. Um, these things were all rusted up, up rusted on together, and uh, you know they wouldn't come off. So I ended up cutting them all. Then I had to go to three different hardware stores until I finally went to Ace Hardware, and found the equivalent of M16 bolts, which are 5 eighths. So uh, these are standard 5 eighths. You know, it was cheaper and it still wasn't cheap. So ended up spending 340 each for the bolts and 280 just for the lock nut. Uh, All right, so you can see just how terrible the original shocks were. Um, they're all rusted out, they don't even work, you know, I can freely move them around. Uh, provided zero uh, shock absorption. Replacing them with the Kony adjustable shocks. Um, you know, much, much better. I, mean, I don't know about the quality. I don't know what, what these were, these might have been sex shocks, which are good quality too, but, but you know, it's 40 years old. <laughs> so. Um, they're bound to deteriorate. These, these shocks were inexpensive and had great reviews, made in Holland, so they're, they're quality, no China. Um, so we just have to put them in, all right? So I'm gonna try to compress it, all right? And it's a lot harder to compress, as you can see. Wow, just got attacked by a cicada. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, um, so I'm going to install them like this in their spot. All right, so one thing you can see it's already releasing and it's going going back. So uh, what I'll do is I'll install the tops first, get them in place, and then I'll use a jack to, uh, to kind of uh, push push this into place. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to work on these fender flares. Um, so when I cut them initially, I took off too much on this on this side. Uh, so I added some more, but I didn't uh, get full coverage. So I need to put in just this little corner piece right here. So I'm gonna add in more um, short strand fiberglass to that. Uh, when I initially did it, I, I used a fiberglass cloth um, sandwiched between short strand and fiberglass. But uh, just a little, this little corner right here should be fine. So I'm going to do that. Uh, also, uh, when I cut these, 
the way these are initially designed is that it needs several screws going in here to, to get it to sit uh, into the vehicle, like exactly along the fender. Um, so now, because I cut it, uh, it doesn't have enough, you know, holding it against the, the fender. So there's like about a millimeter um, along this edge right here that I need to fill in. So I'm going to fill that in with just like a small little uh, bit of fiberglass just along this line right here and then sand that down by hand and sand it all down. And then this side's completed. Um, I just need to fill it in with body filler and sand that down so it's all smooth and you won't see, you know, anything. Um, so I'll get to work on that and I do that for all of them. And then what I need to do is sand everything down and then uh, spray it with 2K epoxy primer. Um, I hate using the 2K uh, kind because it's expensive and I'm on a budget. But uh, for the sake of it, actually, it, um, the Monster Liner adhering to the fiberglass, I need to use uh, 2K. All right. Um, I should have technically used it all over the entire truck, but again, that would have cost me a fortune and I was on a budget. So, um, yeah, let's get to work. All right, so here's where we're currently at. Um, I actually have to call it a day for today, but um, most of the material is put in. I still have to continue working on these. This little piece got knocked off, but I don't know if I'm gonna need it or not. Um, once I uh, sand these down even more, I'll actually bolt them to the, the truck. And then from there I can see um, how much I have to take off or add or whatever um, based on the comparison between the two so you know I have a better eye once I put them both on the car and make sure that they both are symmetrical for the most part or very close to it so uh, that's gonna have to happen in day 51 because I'm done for the day I'm beat